Hello world, Frida Riva Darcy and one Patricia O'Connor here and it is the dog days of summer. Yes, uh, we are in the first of a three day uh, holiday, which is to say here in the States, we will get a weekend and then a Monday off. Now, <clears throat> as that just so happens, it sort of lines up with a heat wave. Uh, yesterday at work, I noticed, for instance, that it was uh, ungodly hot at about three o'clock. Uh, there just wasn't enough water in that place for this one. Uh, but, you know, there's places where I live in the Bay, it's kind of weird. Uh, it'll get hot, hot, hot. You'll feel it coming early. And then, uh, and just like an hour later, it's like the heat will break <clears throat> and you'll get a nice breeze come through. Uh, which is my way of saying, I stuck my head back out of the door about 4.30 and it felt like it had already cooled off by about 15 degrees. Today is a very uh, warm day. It's been like that all day. It started rather warm. All of the trees got watered. They all took more water than they would take uh, typically get. I uh, water my trees on the top until the water comes out of the bottom of the pot. And in order to make that happen on every one of these, I had to one, refill all three of those twice. And uh, and they all took quite a bit of water. That's just no other way to say it. It's partially to do with how much uh, water they lost yesterday after their watering and almost everybody got watered yesterday. So I'm not sure uh, I wasn't thinking about the heat wave at the time because frankly, I didn't, I didn't know about it. And while yesterday wasn't uh, out of hand for the amount that I had watered, I do have to watch out for that. I was making judgment calls before I went to work as to how much water I thought everybody would need before I disappear for eight hours. And uh, everybody kind of stayed in a pretty good way, but Tomorrow uh, is supposed to start being a little warmer. That's going to be my last day of work. Well, actually, okay, so here's the thing. This is probably going to be my Friday drop, but on Friday, I'm actually going to be at work. That will be my, uh, that will be my uh, week's work, week's end. And then from there, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday off. And those are supposed to be when uh, the Bay Area has a heat wave. Most of you other fine and lovely people have been having to deal with your own heat waves around the world. And uh, those have been pretty tough. So far, we ha had been spared quite a bit of that. But uh, as uh, kind of predicted, we are about to get ours now. So in uh, to that end, I have... Uh, given everything a really good watering today and uh, I have also checked on it uh, checked on the trees throughout the day today is already the kind of day where you might uh, water some trees more than uh, once the bougainvillea there is uh, loving the heat it's like bring it uh, I think the oaks probably really like it as long as they have enough water to uh, transpire uh, through their leaves and stuff. I think they they tend to uh, bud out and just get you know full of full of vigor when the heat goes up like that. As uh, do the uh, cypress trees. I would like to show how uh, the cypress trees are. Uh, I hinted at this the other day but I think I can show it better now. There are little buds just starting to swell all over these guys. Uh, so I'm doing that. You can kind of see how it's little peppered with little, with little things all over. So as far as that's concerned, um, I would expect those guys to get, oh, I'll just use, no, that's perfect. I'll use this use piece. Uh, I would expect for uh, for these trees to flush out again. Uh, it's kind of weird, you know. You talk about uh, 
they do uh, your trees go into summer dormancy and uh i guess i always thought about that as uh the heat coming on and the tree just go oh god give me a break and they just kind of go slow and uh to some extent some trees they will talk about a temperature for which they begin to slow their roll but uh until just a few days ago well okay until like last week it had been unseasonably well, compared to what the rest of the world goes through, it had been unseasonably cool. Here in the Bay Area, we kind of get that a lot. You know, it's like June, July, you go, well, this is pretty nice. I don't feel like I'm suffering a whole lot. And then finally, October uh, is what we usually see some, uh, some really, really wicked hot temperatures. So if there was a, a time for a tree to slow down over heat, it would seem like that would be the time to do that. But at that time, the trees are usually starting to get their a little bit of their triggers for uh, how they're going to be behaving um, for winter. You know, that's usually about the time the lights begin to change. What are you doing, Pat? Well, I'll show you. Flip that down so it's out of the way. Flip that up there so it's like that. So I'm not really training any limbs on here, but I'm always brushing against this one in a way that's probably not overly helpful to it. So I'm gonna do this, even though I'm gonna do this with kind of with one hand, show you this little trick I just thought of a while back, but hadn't got around to uh, implementing it. So there's, it's gonna be a guy wire and uh, in here and anchor it through there like so put that straight and my guy wire should have been straight but I can't you know I can't be a half-assed camera person and a, a half-assed gardener at the same time if we go down that much that little piece of bent part will work in our favor so that's all I was going to show you no big uh and those are nothing but you know envelope clips paper clips for office use so boom there you go I've seen people drill holes in these pots to do that but if I wanted to uh use that uh guy wire as a uh training tool that would be the way to do it however uh in the uh, interest of full disclosure, that's not really why I'm doing that. I'm doing that so I, I'll stop running into it when I walk by. At some point this winter, that branch will get chopped back. So uh, I don't really have an bend in it that gracefully goes down that way. Um, it isn't something that really, it isn't something that really helps me. And while I was looking at that earlier. I was looking over at this limb and you see how it had been wired earlier. I'd put some little motion in that guy and it sure is pretty, but uh, that's where watching videos, that's where watching videos is so uh, helpful. I was gonna show you, I could hear uh, Frida chasing dream squirrels, but I don't wanna bother. That's not right for me to uh, film my dog while she's chasing dream squirrels. Those are hers. Uh, anyway, 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 uh, so that's kind of how that, I had seen videos, uh, when you watch a lot of videos, sometimes you'll see some people's training ideas, or sometimes you'll see people's training, uh, mistakes. Maybe they don't think they're mistakes, or maybe when you're looking at them, you think they're mistakes. For instance, I remember looking at this tree about a year ago and seeing how I had cut the branching back in such a way to make it look really proportional and really nice. And I'd put some motion in all the limbs and the tree had a lovely silhouette. And that's kind of the thinking here. When you look at a branch like this, this looks so nice and it does. At this stage in the game, it looks really natural. If I were going to keep the tree looking uh, something like this, I would almost, I would have to have other branches in the wings waiting for when this one becomes uh, disproportionately fat, like say in three years, uh, 
when that becomes something that big around in three or four years, then that's not going to look as good. And the way around that is through, uh, is doing your, is cutting it back and having it vibricate off. When it vibricates off one into two, two into four, four into six, you get longer amount of time before things start getting too big. Even if this is a really pretty and sort of natural look, it's not, to my way of thinking, I'm not crazy about that look later. And uh, that's kind of where, that's kind of where something that is kind of a payoff I have seen some beautiful cypress trees that were like that, but then I look at them and I go, no, that's, I would not, uh, I would not kick that tree out of bed as it were. But at the same time, uh, I think that, uh, even if I liked, even if I like this look right now, probably better than what I'm talking about, I'll like the look of what I'm talking about later and for longer than, um, then this will hold the proportions that make it pretty. Something like this, where this guy is going to get cut, and this guy is going to get cut, and this guy is going to get cut, and this guy is going to get cut. And it's going to be several years before those look like something nice and natural, but they will last longer than the beautiful curvy silhouettes that I have here uh, at some point. I mean, look how much girth this branch got in uh, this one growing season. So three of those, and that would be a... a that would look like a closet rod or something. So that's kind of my idea on why uh, cutting them back short and letting them branch out is uh, probably the preferred way to go. And I'm going to stick with my guns. Now I'm just gonna slide right over here and talk about a very similar tree. We're here looking at my uh, Dawn Redwood and like the cypress trees, it is putting out another round of buds. And again, this isn't heat related. We've had really cool temperatures up until now. It's just now getting uh, a little unreasonably hot. So uh, that's kind of, now what I had been saying all along with this tree, by the way, I just turned it around. Now we're seeing the carved side of it. We're seeing the side that had it back to us for a while. Um, <clears throat> all of these branches are too big and too thick and that's kind of what I was talking about it was okay back in the day when I was thinking I might want to do this tree in a cathedral style those heavy branches were all going to hold up their own little steeple tops on their own so they would kind of ha that would be a a, a a side to that that just a given but uh, about the time I decided I would like to do uh, a more traditional formal upright with this guy uh, give it a chance to do so. We started suffering from some dieback from what I didn't know about cutting and pruning and pinching and um, burn and uh, burn from lights and uh, uh, powdery mildew and that's probably all of the seven plagues that have plagued us since the time that I decided to restyle this tree. Meaning all of those things have been between me and a restyle of this tree. So the uh, things that I was talking about with the cypress trees are exactly what in the end I will be doing to this guy. I'll be cutting this branch off back here and seeing if I can get two better choices than all of this stuff. And I'll be cutting this guy back off here, this guy back off here. I'll probably chop that off. I'll probably chop that off. Up here at the top, it's gotten really wide again. I might take something like this as a new leader, take it up, and then do some recarving to get that down to a, 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 we'll call it a vampire stake. I want this to be slender and not blown out on the end like a knob with a, a shoot coming out of it. Those are what has happened uh, in the time that I've decided to let it be and try to put some energy back because last year, uh, it had two different episodes of uh, dieback. One of them probably heat related and the other one was powdery mildew related. And after the powdery mildew, uh, it was late in the season, it didn't even flush back out until this spring. So uh, uh, this spring is like, okay, all summers, I mean, all bets are off. Uh, I should be feeding this tree. I'm gonna have to do that soon as, 
I'm gonna throw some more fertilizer on that guy. I guess it's already ate its stuff. Uh, now I remember now, I've kind of pushed him down into the bark where you can't see him. That's kind of what's going on there. But uh, I should be feeding this tree if I'm not. And uh, we should, I'm just gonna let it do everything that it can possibly do in the way of limbs, in the way of leaves, in the way of chlorophyll, in the way of uh, energy, in the way of stored energy until this winter when it drops all that mess because it is not an evergreen, it's a deciduous uh, conifer. And then at that point, I'll do that, I'll do that chop that we talked about. And it's not gonna be so much a stalling as much as I'm gonna go through there like a uh, lumberjack with a chainsaw and take all of those limbs down really close to the base. And the only thing that might allow for a little bit of a carving demonstration up at the top, I kinda know what I wanna do up there. So I bet I could probably do it. I could probably do it on video. So that's kinda got us caught up on, uh, and I'm not, and that's also why I'm not doing anything to fix this uh, really ratty shape uh, that this tree is in this year. It's all about let it do what it's gonna do, even if it looks like a bad weed, it's all about trying to restore some energy. The oak, now the oak has its back to us. You can tell it has its back to us because uh, it has a hollow feature right about here on the other side. So I've rotated it around since I took it back out. The little trim back we did the other day is already starting to reward us with more ramification. Really glad to see that. And uh, so yeah, that's a cool thing. While we're this close, the uh, ponderosa, in keeping with the way that uh, I was told to do this ponderosa, it is also not like the, the Japanese black pine. This guy is still getting fed. It's pushing out new growth all over the place. It's the darker green. And then there's the almost, by contrast, these older needles are, uh, are starting to fade as they get ready to sign out but a lot of them are still hanging in there but it looks really good so that's kind of what i've got going on with these guys now like i said i am looking at uh saturday sunday and monday are supposed to be excessively hot what i've done in preparation for now until whenever is all three of my watering cans are at some stage of ready water standby. Also, I have uh, this little, this is one of those little counter top composters, but what it is, it's, I'm not really composting. Uh, I think everybody should compost, but that's not what I'm doing here. What I'm doing here is this is my uh, tub of towels. I've got three or four towels in there. For instance, I know this side of the tree gets dry quickly. And if it gets really hard and gets, uh, has too much sun on it, that can cause damage. And that might even cause damage to that side of the tree. So uh, a wet t-shirt or a wet towel, it's not, a, it's not a bad idea for that guy. And to that end, we are ready. Same with this tree, same with that tree. That's just uh, to keep the pots from getting so uh, ungodly hot while at the same time our ambient temperatures are going to be that hot. So we have water on the standby. We can just grab and dump as needed. We've kind of pinned back our trees a little bit to keep them out of, the, uh, out of our way. And uh, that's kind of all we have going on. It's kind of all we have going on today. I'm really happy with the look of the cork bark. It's now facing the opposite way as it was when uh, before I uh, brought it in the other day and did a little bit of uh, snip back on it too. Uh, at some point, I would like to try to get more motion uh, on this guy. The cork bark oaks are kind of known for being... Uh, as as one uh, as one YouTube creator said, ramrod straight, and yeah, that's kind of in keeping with why I nicknamed this thing 
or why I named it log as soon as I got it in. But it's not really that bad. Some Another thing is at some point, this guy probably had a little bit of a little bit of swirly shape going for it and something else this guy doesn't have in the trunk and that is taper uh we do have the ace of base right here this is a very nice that stuff is so hard and solid it's just yeah but uh as it grows thick bark it's like if you drew a swirly line and then started drawing a line outside of it farther and forth the farther out you got the more subtle your curves would get. So what might have been kind of a fairly curvy line in the beginning, uh, a couple of inches of bark later is looking pretty subtle and has most of its direction seem to have seem to have gone. But what we like is this base. So that's not gonna kill us at any point. Maybe by incorporating this branch and allowing this guy to go uh, longer, bigger, Maybe letting some more stuff come out of the base instead of nipping it off first thing. We could try to get a little bit more swell going this way. And maybe we could not be so fast and nip things off over here and get a little bit of swell back going over there. Then we can get a little hip action, if you know what I mean. We go from this transition back to here. I think that it probably had some of that movement in it, but as the bark got thicker, that went away. Uh, I would like to encourage more growth here, more growth here. And then to that end, I'm going to let stuff that comes out along here do so and try to get that base to incorporate more of this area. In other words, we could create taper uh, if we just did, or at least got it on the right track to do that. Uh, in the past, I've been really fast to uh, pinch stuff off that wasn't in my design plan and i kind of think now that i was pinching off in some cases some of the stuff that would have helped me the most was some of the first probably to get pinched off but on the other hand stuff that's growing in the wrong place and just causing you taper issues uh need to be considered also so that's kind of the idea there uh and it kind of brought to mind my thinking about that. I was just watching uh, a video by uh, somebody who I talk about somewhat on here, Eric at Bonzify, and he just did some on a several year old, uh, three or four, uh, two or three probably year old cork bark oak uh, seedlings. And that was one of the first things he did was he wired them and put some serious, serious motion in them, kind of like he did uh, our little uh, Mame pine tree here. So, uh, yeah, and that would have made a world of difference. And he showed a, he showed an oak that was probably one of the finest oaks I'd ever seen, and it did. It had it had taper. It had trunk out to here, and it got smaller. But it also did, you know, kind of a. It was what it was exactly what you don't see in other cork bark oaks. It was form and motion and uh, taper and it was beautiful so I don't have that going for me now but I could build that with my branch choices and kind of the same ones I have going now just just let them go more at the base and don't let this be the only little sprout that can survive there maybe don't let this this be the only little sprout that can survive there all the little pups or whatever that want to come out at the base can we're just going to make something swell out there we're going to make something swell out here we're going to create a little we're going to create a little motion there and there and try to uh regain what i think may have been lost it might have actually had that or it might have been that uh this was a uh rooted cutting off of a cork bark and uh as such it may have just been a limb when i looked at the bottom there was a very flat cut, like at some point somebody had cut off a branch and it was about, get, get that in, it was about that big. So, you know, 15 years ago or so after that thing had been, uh, had been a cutting, 
on a cork bark oak, we get this. And uh, so it might not have had that much motion in it before. Or like I said, the, the thickness of the bark might have kind of uh, robbed some of that direction flow as everything kind of swole its way out. But either way, that seems like to be one idea of a way that I could get that motion to come back. Otherwise, I still think it's a beautiful tree. I've never, I was uh, taken with log uh, as it is the first time I saw it. And whereas sometimes the first trees you see that you like, your taste sort of evolve and you go, yeah, I don't know why I felt uh, for this or why I felt for that. Not so much with this guy. I've always, it's always delivered in the way of pushing out things for me to experiment on. And uh, there's always been things to learn about it that were not too far over my head. And it's always seemed to have responded to the things that I learned. If somebody said, start trimming the ends and you'll get more back votes. When I did that, they did. If somebody said, start feeding it more and you'll start seeing more back butts and pushing up more growth and i did that and that's exactly what we saw too and uh these people would say things like uh don't water it so much if you want your leaves to shrink and then other people say if you're developing your tree water it so that it will get the machine rolling you'll worry about the leaves later and i would say that's where i am they can uh when i got this tree it was full of leaves that were this big and uh, now it makes leaves that are this big, but we're also making tree. That takes a little bit longer. Leaves come and go. There's a way to get all the leaves that big. We'll worry about that when we have all of our other uh, ducks in a row. Uh, I think probably before the weekend, I'm probably, I'm trying to think about enough program to do a literati show. I love literatis. This is my one of my latest pine acquisitions was this Japanese black pine literati putting out all those little all those little shoots everywhere. I have two I am a happy owner of uh, two Yamadori literatis, one being Haas and uh and the other being Hondo. So yeah we we'll, I'm kinda of thinking about that one we might do a literati show here in a minute. But that's kind of all I've got. Uh, that's kind of all I've got on the books for now today uh, for our Friday, our Friday drop. It's a beautiful day. There's already people out at the pool. I'm sure this weekend is going to be hopping and we uh, and we are going to be ready what it is. So that's not going to be an issue. That's not going to be an issue. Like and subscribe if you guys have uh, not already. Uh, we're just going to keep right on rolling with our trees and our projects and getting uh, probably more pines and doing some more shape work on our redwoods and uh, learning uh, more and better about our uh, Japanese black pines and probably acquiring a few more ponderosas. Uh, that is a little freebie. Uh, rigging trick that you could use to uh, kind of throw a guy wire anywhere without hurting your uh, pot or uh, drilling holes in, in your trunk. Uh, if that will help you in some way. Uh, pat here. So yeah, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you guys uh, later on in the weekend and I hope you are having yourself a wonderful, wonderful day.